Howdy everybody, Steve here, KM9G. Today I've got a special treat for you. My friend Tom has created a GitHub repo with all kinds of juicy, spicy secrets about the X6200, and we're gonna take a look at it today. If you just wanna go look at it by yourself, there is a link in the description down below. If you wanna look along with me and hear any of my thoughts in this process, I'd be happy to share them with you. So stick around and let's get to it. So this repo is tom ACCO, T-O-M-A-C-C-O. It is over on GitHub and it's called the Zygu X6200 Research Repo. And he's got a whole bunch of research in here for us. So he's got firmware release notes, full TX, Git rooted, imagery, readme, which is what this file right here is, and notes. So let's take a look at notes. Wi-Fi issues connecting to Wi-Fi through UI can be resolved by using the command line. Yep. Ensure Wi-Fi is switched on from the radio UI first. That makes sense. The new version of the firmware on the 6200 that came out, I guess, a week or two ago as of the time of this recording actually makes it more difficult to enter in your Wi-Fi user ID and password and SSID and all that kind of jazz. And I had to plug in an external keyboard in order to be able to type on it. So this might be a faster way to do it. But of course, you can't do it unless you're already on the command line, which would then require a serial cable. USB to USB works just fine. But that's a pain in the butt too. Connecting to an access point, that would be how you would do it from the command line. That's very helpful. AP mode doesn't seem to work. Errors when bringing up the connection. So he tried the access point mode, which is where your Radio would be the hotspot for your network, your Wi-Fi hotspot for your network, and then all of your other devices like your phone or your computer or your tablet would connect to the radio as the source of networking. Not necessarily the source of internet, but the source of networking. So you could do radio to radio or whatnot type stuff. If you're out in the field, it might be easier for you to use your cell phone as a hotspot and then your radio can then talk to your phone and your phone can talk to your radio and you know tablets and laptops and so on. So that might be another option for you is to use your cell phone's built-in hotspot feature. So there's some notes. Let's go back to the main page. Firmware release notes, version 1.0.0. This appears to be just a straight upload from the Radiodity release notes, 1.0.1. And the way Radiodity has been doing these release notes is they have been cumulative. So every time you get one, you'll get updates from each of the previous firmwares in the same document. 1.03. Yep, same thing. Get root. Here's a basic guide on how to get root on your machine. And it makes it really easy because he just tells you the username is root and the password is 123. And that, this is the same password that the X6100 has had. When I first did the breaking into the radio, what I did was I looked at this Etsy shadow file here, and this is actually a hash of your of your password that you type in, this long hash looking thing here. And what I did was I went onto a Raspberry Pi machine, I made a user and a password, got it hashed in my shadow file, then I copied my password hash over into this file on the internal flash storage system of the radio. And then when I rebooted, I knew what that password was because I had typed it in. And then a couple of days later, somebody did this trick here, which is using a program called John the Ripper, kind of like Jack the Ripper, only John the Ripper. And since there's only one hash in the shadow file, it found one and converted it. So the root user and then the password of one, two, three, one password hash cracked, zero left. And then he did the same thing on firmware 1.03. And it looks like Zygu has no intentions of changing this root password. Password. So if you're ever going to connect the radio to an untrusted network or to the internet directly without some kind of firewall or natting in between, then you definitely want to change this password because it is a very well-known password in the field. Gets them onto a working Linux system, and I believe there's a compiler on there, so that's a, a recipe for hacking. And you can download the firmware file from Radioddity's website and inside that firmware file you'll find this shadow. So you don't even need to do this stuff on the radio if you want to play around. You can just play around with the plain files that are inside of the archive. Enable full TX, full transmit, and that's what Zygu calls it is full TX or some people call it a Mars mod or something like that. When you log in to the radio via command line, you can do it over serial port or you can do it over uh, SSH once you get your Wi-Fi connected. You edit this file, Etsy XG radio slash XG radio dot conf, and then you change full band dash TX to enable. So all you do is change this where it says disable to enable. And on the 6100, this works great. And I have been able to successfully transmit out of band into a dummy load on the 6200. You see the full TX icon on the screen, but you you do not have the ability to transmit outside of band as of my last check. They might fix that in an updated firmware, they might not. 
Don't know. And here's the moment that I've been waiting for. This is imagery. This is pictures inside the base unit. And here's the back left. All right, so there is a heat sink for your final transistors. There's a couple of other small transistors here. Uh, I don't know what this area is looking at it from the underside. But, you know, there's some information there if you're if you're interested in that. Here's the back middle. We're going to see that heat sink again. Yep, there's that same heat sink. We kind of moved a little bit over from one side to the middle. See a couple more chips back right. All right, and there is the microphone port. And there is the key ports and speaker ports and so on over there. That's a little dirty looking. That looks like a little bit of rework. We'll see what's on the top side of that. So somebody looks like they cleaned off a section of the board here, or maybe that's just where the light is, or the camera is blocking the light or something along those lines. I don't know. But if you see a circuit board like this, and you kind of want to know what's going on, you can look at this chip name here, PCA9535PW, and go out and Google that, and you'll want to be looking for something called a data sheet, and that'll tell you what that chip does and how to interface with that chip and so on. And, you know, you just kind of develop a further understanding of these things as, as time goes by. And if your radio ever gets burnt out, sometimes you can come in and you can look, and if this picture is high enough resolution, it may or may not be, I don't know, you can zoom in and you can see like, oh, I, this is a big scorch mark on my radio, and then you can see the part number here and order that part and get it replaced. So stuff like this is very helpful. Here is the back. That's the whole back. Okay, awesome. And then front, left, middle, right. Oh, that's interesting to see those headers there. These look like pogo pins, so they have a little bit of a spring to it. So there's a, a board that you would push down on top of that in order to get B plus and B minus, which I would assume is battery power. And then SDA and SCL are uh, I squared C connections, I believe is what they are. But these are, these are definitely communications lines, so you can program stuff in here. It is good to see that they haven't put in a whole lot of just... Like in the 6100 that I had, there were just dev boards that were put on top of the radio circuit board instead of everything being integrated. This looks like it's much more integrated. It looks like there was a RF shield on top of this. That's what these little clips here are, are for, is to clip in your RF shield to protect these components. This over here looks like a voltage conversion area. Transmit and receive pathways to another circuit board inside. And then we've got some relays over here and some inductors. And then this says LPF, so low pass filter. Front middle. So here are some more relays over here with some different windings of toroids. And we see relays lays down here with different windings of toroids. So this might be your low pass filter and this might be your tuner as a guess, but we'll have to look more and see more in here. Antenna connection there, front right. Yeah, so I see a bunch of relays over here and a bunch of inductors, but what I would expect to see for a tuner network over here would be capacitors or down here would be capacitors. And maybe it's a camera angle thing and I can't see them. And then this is the whole front. So these connectors down here probably go off to the display unit and the keypad as a guess. All right, the display unit. We'll just look at the big picture of the back. There's those ribbon cables that go down to the main unit that we just looked at. There's one of those dev modules that I was talking about where they just put the module on top of the existing circuit board. I can't tell what that is with the coax in the way. We might be able to see that a little closer in a different picture. It's your SD card slot and your two USB connectors. So now we need to go in deeper. Let's look at the left side. And then here is your sound chip, the CM108 sound chip. And really you just, you know, start, start to get used to seeing these things pop up in different devices and you start to figure out what they are. I mean, we've all heard of Intel, so we know Intel is a CPU manufacturer. And you can look up what a GL850... G is, or maybe that's a GL8506. And then on the bottom of a lot of these chips, you'll see a four digit code. And this says 2336, I think. And that would be the 36th week of 2023 is when the CM108 chip was made. Back middle. Yeah, I can't tell what this chip here is. Let's look at the back right and see that castellated module. Yeah, so the one cable is moved out of the way. And if you look, there's a wire that comes out of here to this big pad and a wire that comes out of here to this big pad. So I'm thinking this might be the Wi-Fi Bluetooth module, just as a guess, knowing what this radio does and knowing what things like this would be. But we'll keep looking because what's on the front side of that? It's interesting. It's got a cyclone on the back and an all winner on the front. That sounds like two CPUs. Maybe the cyclone is replacing. No, because there's the STM32. So we've got a cyclone, an all winner R16, and an STM32 processor on this board. Very interesting. So all of these are your push buttons that are on the front of the radio. These are the buttons that are underneath the screen. And then there's a little light there. Excellent. Let's go back to imagery. Look at miscellaneous imagery. Fascia front. Cool. Screen front. Chassis front. So some heat sink pads. 
Yep, and this looks like it's very similar construction to the 6100, where the wires go. So in the 6100 and now also in the 6200, there is a large heat sink that runs the middle of the chassis. So it's going to add some weight, of course, but you still need heat management. Yeah, and then remember I was telling you about this module here, this cover plate. We thought that it was going to be an expansion slot, and it turned out that when you undid the screws and removed the lid, there was this metal plate here. And as you can see by looking inside of this radio, there is no place to put anything under underneath that plate. And there's another plate on the bottom. That's the one we just looked at. Yeah, there's another plate on the bottom of the radio that does the same thing. We don't have top and bottom shots here. Maybe you can see there's a little opening there if I'm oriented properly. But yeah, there's no, like one of the things I would be looking for with that top slot is some type of edge card connector that you'd be shoving the device down into to connect to, but nothing. There's just nothing there. It's just a, a way to make it look pretty. All right, there's the imagery. And then we have everything else, exploration notes. Let's see what the notes are. Oh, this is the notes file that we already read. The cool thing about GitHub is that contributions are always welcome. If there is something that you think should be added to this repo, add it. And that's the nature of community and open source and all kinds of other stuff along those lines. There are a couple of buttons and links and so forth and contact info and all kinds of other things at the repo itself where you can go ahead and reach out to Tom and he'll go ahead and include it. So there will be a link for this repo in the description down below of this video as well as a link to Radiotity where you can get some discount on purchasing this radio if you are interested or any one of Radiotity's fine products over there. This is an interesting radio. My thoughts on this are... If you want to just get a radio and make contacts, it's fine. It's not the best. It's got problems. If you guys have been following the X6100 saga, they haven't fixed 100% of them yet. They've disabled some of the features in that radio. Some of the features in that radio didn't make it to this radio, like the IQ out is gone. So who knows where they're going with this in the future, but it's something to play with, and it's a you know a roller coaster ride of emotions and feelings and fun and disappointment and so on and all kinds of stuff. There's more to this radio than just that which might make it interesting for some people. I am looking forward to all of the possibilities of loading software directly onto the radio and displaying them directly on the radio screen and connecting via Bluetooth keyboard and mouse and having my antenna out so I can go out in the field and I can activate a park and log contacts and carry a keyboard and mouse with me and a radio and an antenna. And that's it. This would make a really small go kit in that scenario because it's got a battery internal and it runs your logging software. Or you could just do FT8 and you wouldn't need the keyboard and the mouse if only this radio had a touch screen that would be pretty awesome so i'm continuing to be on the lookout for new and interesting ways to use this radio as a computer so if that's something that interests you make sure you're subscribed for future videos otherwise there's a video right over here i think you might enjoy next thanks for being awesome i'll see you over there